New at 7, confirmation, 2020 primary school examinations cancelled. Head of Clinical Laboratory at Mount St. John's Medical Center provides timeline for local COVID-19 testing. Beaches and retail stores, the latest to be reopened with specific rules in place. Our news team takes to the streets to observe proceedings. And the Environment Division completes report on HEDA development. ABS News at 7 starts now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Hello, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the evening news here on ABS and Tigas News Authority. My name is Garfield. And I'm Sharon Miller Taswell. Thanks for joining us tonight. Our top story tonight, the Education Ministry says there will be no national examinations at the primary education level this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. That's right, Sharon. Our students in Antigua and Barbuda are among almost 300 million around the world who are out of school because of the spread of the disease. ABS's Leon Norville has the latest on this developing story and what it means for students. Widespread disruption to traditional classroom instructional times have left syllabuses and the school-based projects incomplete and examination preparations fragmented. In a press release from the Ministry of Education, it says, Education remains deeply concerned about the mental and the physical well-being of students who need as much certainty as possible at an uncertain time. Having to face high-stress exams at this juncture of heightened anxiety, of the fear and uncertainty brought about by COVID-19, as well as the loss of peer interaction and disrupted routines. After widespread consultations and examining several possibilities, the decision is to cancel the 2020 National Primary School Assessments. Now, for persons who may not know exactly what the National Primary School Assessments are, for students in grade 2 and 4, the assessment is done mainly for developmental reasons and is held at the ending of May. The National Grade 6 Assessment, however, is held at the beginning of June and is the final placement exam for primary school students at the grade 6 level for placement purposes into the secondary school system. Director of Education Claire Brown says the absence of the exam will see grade 6 students assigned and offered placements in public secondary schools using evaluations at the school level. We are intending to place them this year based on four things. One, either um, place of residence, special educational needs, health and safety, and that's a restricted number of students, and then outstanding achiever placement. The outstanding achiever place will in this instant replace the traditional top 100 students ranking. We have asked schools, this sometime during the course of today, we will be sending, the Ministry of Education will be sending to schools a spreadsheet where they will rank their students this is how schools will rank each grade 6 student based on their performance in term 1 and the midterm of term 2. Schools will then be required to provide that information to the measurement and evaluation unit by the 29th of May. The Director of Education says secondary school placements will be released in the first week of July. Leon Norville reporting, ABS News. Or of course, I will certainly be keeping across that story. Thanks, Leon. Uh, the Minister of Education says it's formulating a plan for the phased reopening of schools for the upcoming academic year. Well, local testing for COVID-19 is to begin around the middle of May, barring any unforeseen occurrences. Now, that update has been provided by the head of the laboratory at Mount St. John's Medical Center, where the tests will be carried out. 
Consultant pathologist Dr. Lester Simon made the revelation on Wednesday's Impact Corona. A response to the question many have been asking. If all goes well, if all goes well, uh, we should complete the training in the first week of May. That's next week. Of course, Monday is Labor Day. Um, and when that is done, uh, we should, again, all things being equal, all things going well, we should be ready to start testing the week after that, which is the second week in May. However, when testing starts at the laboratory at the Mount St. John's Medical Center, validation of the first set of results will need to be carried out by the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFA. We will, in fact, have to start testing on patients and still match our results with those at CARFA, by which I mean we'll do sample testing and send a report off to, send a sample off to CARFA so that we can see a matching of the two results. He says this is part of the external quality control in any testing process. However, before the country reaches this point of actually testing, the training of the individuals who will be engaged in the process will need to be completed by the first week of May. Four medical technologists and a laboratory manager are involved in this training, which is all being carried out remotely. Dr. Simon explains why the timeline has been a moving target up to this point. We have to be careful. We cannot set hard and fast deadlines, and then when things happen, things outside of our control, what happened? You know, where's the testing? You know, we keep on putting things back. And this is one of the issues that, that we have had. And I can understand, um, you know, people being concerned as to the keep on, you know, changing the date. But as I said, a lot of things have been outside of our control. The machine will test samples taken from the nasal passage of individuals. Dr. Simon says while the full capacity would be about 180 tests in a 24-hour period, a more realistic target would be about 150. Molecular biologist Dr. Linroy Christian says the testing with the use of the polymerase chain reaction or PCR machine has been used for some time in laboratories, but the variables have to be just right. If you do not do your initial RNA extraction well, you will, so you will then have a, a, a poor test result. So you have to ensure that you follow all of the protocols to ensure that you arrive at what would be the truest sample. While this may be a test of patients for some, the two experts say they want to get it right for the patients of COVID-19. Meanwhile, Dr. Simon has issued a caution about antibody rapid tests in relation to COVID-19. Antibody tests examine whether the body had developed an immune response to a particular infection antibody tests which are being pushed on the people of this country they are not ready they are not, not, they're not re ready they're not valid. they're not ready for prime time they're not validated and they should not be used and the folks who are using them should disabuse themselves of the nonsense Let's tell about this developing story now because today retailers reopened for business the first time in a month in St. John's while well, movement downtown was relatively quiet as store owners could only hope business gets better in the coming weeks. One businesswoman says being the first day of reopening since, of course, the lockdown, it's expected things will be slow. A month or two before there will be an uptick in business within St. John's. The business until we don't have to sit down. But now we have to sit and wait to prefer it to come in town. So I for the best that everything will come back normal with the blessing of the Lord. And many of us are excited about getting some beach time. A reminder, you can return to beaches beginning Tuesday of next week for therapeutic purposes. They're after Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. until 6 in the evening. But of course, a reminder that no more than two people from the same household may go to the beach at any one time. No music is allowed and no picnicking on the beach. Well, traditional Labor Day activities will be affected this year amidst the measure in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The Antigua Trades and Labor Union says although it cannot mark the day in the conventional manner, ways will be used to reach members with the message. Now, Antigua Trades and Labor Union President Wiggly George 
explains the focus of their appearance on that. And this will include why or how they're coping with the pandemic and the drawbacks they may be having. George is calling on all members to stay safe and continue to follow the safety guidelines set by the officials. The ATNLU represents over 7,000 workers and has been celebrating Labor Day for approximately 69 years. In other news tonight, the elderly are some of the most vulnerable for COVID-19. ABS's Jessica Russell spoke to a manager for an elderly care facility to find out what is being done to navigate these challenging times. Shami Residential Care Services has made changes in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. I spoke to the manager, Mary Yearwood, who says the well-being of residents is priority. I have day patients that come and go and I stop them because they going back home will pick it up and bring it in and maybe my clients that's in house will um, start to react faster than the ones that bring it in. She says staff also has to be cautious when entering the facility. The staff are coming to work and change their clothes, shoes as well. They will also be, um, you know, clean up, sanitize themselves at the door and come in. The home has about 10 patients living there, ranging from the late 60s to 90 years old. Yearwood says her team has been working to keep the spirit of the residents up. We also have sessions with them where we listen to the radio, we make our comment, we also have our own in-house, you know, um, family gathering where we talk, we sing, we do all the different things. And those that are here call them, uh, you know, I find out if they want to talk with them. So they call them and they speak to them or they speak with me. Some come by and I, I send them around the house by the window <laughs> so they could hear their voice. The manager says the residents have also video chatted with loved ones proving that being socially distant doesn't mean being emotionally disconnected. Jessica Russell, ABS News. Thanks, Jessica. Now in this ABS News follow-up, Health Minister Arnold Marlon Joseph led media workers on the recently commissioned on a tour of the recently commissioned Infectious Disease Control Center, the IDC, this afternoon. Here again, ABS is Jessica Russell, who was there to find out more on how the facility will be used and managed. This is where COVID-19 patients who fall seriously ill are expected to be treated from now on. You have the Heart monitors. The Infectious Disease Control Center, formerly the Magazine Ward, has been equipped with state-of-the-art equipment to ensure a sterile environment. This machine ensures the room is kept at negative pressure to prevent contamination from room to room. This facility is an extension of Mount St. John Medical Center. All that is happening is a designated um, facility for COVID patients. Currently, there are two COVID-19 patients at the Mount St. John's Medical Center. Health Minister Marwin Joseph says the patients will remain at Mount St. John's to avoid disrupting their treatment. And so. At the new facility, nurses will be able to keep an eye on patients from this room. My understanding is that we have two nurses per shift, mm -hmm. and the shifts are four hours each. So if you have um, four patients, mm -hmm. eight nurses, the facility has 17 rooms for patients and 18 rooms for nurses. The facility has been overhauled with the use of government funds and some equipment donated. Jessica Russell, ABS News. This is where COVID-19 patients who fall seriously ill are expected to... All right, uh, or thanks to Jessica there. Now stay with us. We're covering Antigua and Barbuda and the world. This is the ABS Evening News still to come in this newscast. Environment Division reports released regarding recent complaints about Yida developments. We'll have much more on that on the Yida developments coming up. Absolutely. And let's tell you about also a developing story that we're tracking. Governor General Sir Rodney Williams and Lady Williams pay glowing tribute to the late Timothy Payne. We'll explain the Governor General's tribute on air and online. Upcoming on the ABS Evening News. Do stay with us, please. At Najiko, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like knowing you're covered when your house gets flooded. Getting your settlements quickly and fairly when a fire hits your home. And making sure your business can keep going even after an accident happens on site. At Najico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Good morning, sir. Here's the meal. Have a good day. Hey, Bob. 
how did you get that? And Dr. EB? Hey, Bob! Dr. Killino just couldn't seem to get the respect he deserved, so he went to the good folks at Sherwin Williams for help. A fresh coat of A100, now he looks brand new. Plus, his home is protected from the elements. Bring your home to life with the very best paints, only at Sherwin Williams. Thank you so much for staying with us. Another heartwarming act of kindness from corporate Antigua during the COVID-19 pandemic to report this evening. Food Brokerage Services Limited has again extended a hand of support to another group within the essential services. ABS's Leo Norville explains which group it is. After their donation to the Pines Institute a couple weeks ago, Food Brokerage Services is again sharing love and support, this time to police officers at the Longford's police station. The first thing that our directors and owners decided was how can we help the community. Um, we we you always hear about huge donations like um, from overseas donors and we said you know we can't th sit down and wait on that we have to decide what we could do in our own way among the items donated were cases of oats corned beef toilet paper and crackers officer in charge of procurement superintendent vivian parker says he's moved by the company's gesture well you we feel very pleased and happy to see that um some Members of the public, for example, Food Brokers Services Limited, they are thinking of the police and their well-being. And we feel pleased because we are in the forefront in the fight against the COVID. Managing Director of Food Brokerage Services Limited, Leslie Salmon, says there are plans to continue delivering support to all essential workers, including doctors, nurses, and media workers. He encourages other local companies to do their part to show appreciation. I want to encourage other businesses to do the same don't matter how small you are because our mindset is this if you have a um you could donate a loaf of bread that's what you could afford you have five loaves and you say i could give one that may have more meaning and impact than even us giving 20 cases leonor reporting abs news Good, helping each other out. All right, several initiatives to protect our students with special needs have been prepared in order to educate them of the dangers of COVID-19 and to assist them with caring for themselves during this time. Well, today, care packages were distributed to the Adele School. Students receive soap, hand sanitizers, along with other sanitary items, and instructions on the correct way to wash hands. Now, staff at the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology prepared the packages. They also received assistance from Her Excellency Miss Karen May Hill, British High Commissioner, Andrew Wholesale, and Cool and Smooth. Well, students at the School for the Deaf will get their care packages next week, Tuesday. In March, the Special Needs Department started their initiative by holding lectures and presentations on proper respiratory etiquette and good hygiene. In other news tonight here on ABS News, the Environment Division has completed its finding into reports that mangroves were being destroyed on the site of the Yida project. Information Minister the Honorable Melford Nicholas told Wednesday's post-Cabinet News Conference the Environment Division has cleared the developers of any environmental abuse. Listen. The Minister with Responsibility for the Environment, the Honorable Malvin Joseph, did indicate to the Cabinet that uh, the Department of Environment has rendered the report and they have indicated that uh, EDA had not been in violation of any of its obligations under the agreement and that it was not in violation of any of the laws pertinent to environmental management and stewardship. The report has been handed over to the Development Control Authority and the Fisheries Division. They have now made that report available to the Department, to the DCA and uh, the Fisheries Department. And so I think when they would have considered it, uh, between themselves uh, that they will then be able to come to the public to give uh, further details. Governor General, His Excellency Sir Rodney Williams and Lady Williams have paid glowing tribute to the, to the contribution of the late journalist and photographer Timothy Payne. 
Sir Rodney and Lady Williams have also sent condolences to his family. The Governor General has hailed Payne's contribution to journalism, community development, education, heritage and culture. Sir Rodney also says Payne was also passionate about the restoration of the Barnes Hill Reservoir and would have launched two books and a historic photographic presentation about the area had it not been for the restrictions due to COVID-19. Timothy Payne died last Saturday. Uh, Sharon, uh, again, condolences yeah. to his family. Absolutely, yes. Mm. A job well done for sure. Mm. Well, we have a lot of happy viewers again because we have sports, kind of, right? Absolutely, Sharon. And bodybuilders finding ways to keep fit for the mm. Nationals, whenever the Nationals <laughs> <Right>. are. <laughs> and whenever any sort of sporting events return, we'll talk about how they are flexing wow. their muscles at home when we come back with Joel Ray. Sorry, with Terry Andrews. Stay with us.